All right. Well, we're back again. Yeah. And we're continuing on in our study the book of Mark. We're still in chapter 4. And I uh, hope you're enjoying this, getting something out of it. You know, yeah. the, we finished up last time the first <clears throat> part of a chapter 4 talking about the the different types of soil that the seeds planted in. And I just pray that your heart is good soil because there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed is a word of God and it will produce if we'll just make sure it's planted in good soil that yes. our heart's ready to receive it. Yes. And so we'll just continue on with where we left off. We left off in chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, verse 21. <clears throat> He's talking about seeds. Now he goes to talking about a lamp. Oh. He says, Then Jesus asked them, Would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. Mm. A lamp's placed on a stand where the light will shine, yeah. where its light will shine. For everything that's hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So, of course, that makes sense. You know, you don't buy a lamp and then hide it underneath the table, no, do you? No, no. A, a lamp is to bring illumination, to, yeah. to light the way for you. Yeah. So certainly you wouldn't put it under a basket, under your bed. No. You know, you set your lamp up on the end table, up on your nightstand, you know, where it shows. Uh, it lights up the dark. Yeah, it lights up the dark. <laughs> So what do you think he's talking about here? You think he's just talking about, you know, getting new lamps for your house? or? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know if it follows in sequence really, but it in the Bible it follows after talking about the seed planted in the heart. Mm -hmm. And so we become like the lamp that needs to shine. Yeah, as a word changes our life is the, 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 mm -hmm. the seed the word changes our lives produces yeah. a change in our lives yeah. we need to let that show forth let our light shine yeah <laughs> and i think jesus certainly could be talking about himself here too because he says he was the light of the he world the light of the world but then later on he says you're the light of the world yes yes <clears throat> and so basically let your light shine yeah let people see you know not not that you're trying to uh, impress people, but just living a godly life. Just living the kind of life that God wants you to live. Yeah. And, and not, not hiding it, you know, not, uh, how do you want to say, not acting like the rest of the world does. You know, sometimes when we get around uh, people that aren't Christians or don't live exactly right, uh -huh. it's almost like, we kind of hide our light, you know. Yeah. Well, we want to we want to blend in. We uh -huh. want to fit in with the group, you know. And, and again, that doesn't mean you have to preach to everybody, but just live the way you're supposed to live. Live the way God wants you to yeah, live. God and to and well. people will be touched just by your life, just by seeing the change in your life. Yeah. You know, I've <clears throat> seen a lot of people that that uh, at one time they lived a pretty bad life and God got a hold of them and changed them and just being around them you see a change and people yeah. want to know you know what's what's the difference in your life yeah. and that doesn't mean everybody's going to change their life everybody's going to accept Jesus just yeah. because you're living right but a lot of people may and it may influence a lot of people I think about the Apostle Paul you know of course he had a face-to-face encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus yeah, he sure did. <laughs> but before that when we saw Paul he was standing there watching when they were stoning Stephen uh -huh. and he saw the the peace that Stephen had even while they were stoning him yeah. and he said you know here Stephen say Lord don't lay this sin to their their account forgive them basically what Jesus said when he was nailed to the cross forgive them for what they're doing no, no. and I, I can't help but believe that that had some kind of an impact upon paul yeah. and later on like say when he had a face to face with jesus i believe the lord had been working on him ever since that time so you never know what your example will will make uh, what difference it'll make in somebody else's life yeah for sure 
And he says, everything that's hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. I don't think he's talking here about our secret sins are all going to be revealed. I no. think he's talking about <clears throat> the truth of the word the will be is, revealed. Yeah. You know, a lot of this was that we're reading about here was actually hidden away. In Colossians 1, it says that, you know, for years this has been hidden, yes. been a mystery. But yes. now it's been revealed to us. And yes. what is that mystery? Christ in us. Christ the hope in of us. Glory. The hope of glory. That's, <laughs> that's what... The, all the prophets and the Old Testament people were looking forward to uh -huh. Christ coming and living in us. Yes. That's that's the mystery, and now it's been revealed. Yeah. We don't have to uh, live by the law anymore, but we have Christ living in us and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us yes. to lead us and to guide us Thank and you. reveal yes. to us the things that, that have been hidden. He says, anyone with ears to hear should listen means listen carefully pay attention to the word of god and understand yes. he goes on in verse 24 he says he added pay close attention to what you hear the closer you listen the more understanding you'll be given and you'll receive even more to those who listen to my teaching more understanding will be given but for those who are not listening even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them in other words if we pay close attention to what Jesus is uh -huh. saying, we're going to learn more and more. We'll get more understanding. Yeah. The light will become brighter and brighter. But if we don't pay attention, if we're like those that the seed that falls on the hard ground, you know, and it just bounces right off of uh -huh. us, you know, <clears throat> not only will we not learn anything new, but we'll begin to lose what little we had, yeah. what little understanding yeah. we have. And, and we become totally uh, mixed up and confused. The only, the only way we're going to get enlightenment is through the Word of God. That's, that's a truth, you know. We talk, or we hear a lot of talk nowadays about the truth and about fake news and what's true and what's not. And, and, and sometimes it's, it's hard to know because, especially in the world of politics, truth is, um, well... To be honest, it's sometimes hard to come by. But as you read the Word of God, you know you're reading the truth. Yes. You're reading what's yes. really true. And let's go on here. He talks some more about seeds. Goes back to talking about seeds again. Verse 26, Jesus also said, The kingdom of God's like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Uh -huh. Night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. But he did not understand how it happens. The earth produces a crop on its own. First, a leaf blade pushes through. Then the heads of wheat are formed. Finally, the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. For harvest time has come. Basically, I think what he's saying here is you don't have to understand everything for it to work. Yeah. I mean, how many of us understand the principle of how a seed grows? Now, maybe if you've got a Ph.D. in agronomy or, you know, some agricultural-related thing, you might have some yeah. fairly good ideas of how seed grows or germinates, but even, even the most brilliant scientist doesn't really totally yeah. understand it. And yet, a five-year-old kid, when you go to kindergarten, you know, they have you plant a bean in a, in a, in a little <laughs> cup of soil. Yeah. They have no idea how that grows. No. All they know is their teacher said, put it in that soil, put a little water on it, and what happens? Watch First thing you know, that little old bean has got a plant coming up uh -huh. there. And they're so you, excited. Yeah, they're excited about it. <laughs> well, he says the kingdom of God's the same way. It's like a seed, and it's growing. Once yeah. that seed's planted in your heart, it's growing. Uh -huh. And you don't have to understand why. Yeah. In fact, sometimes if we get to questioning it too much, it's like a farmer going out after three days and he doesn't see anything, and he starts digging it up and seeing yeah. what's happening, yeah. you know. <laughs> and he just kills the seed. <clears throat> but it grows if we'll let it stay in our heart, if we'll hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And it will produce a crop. That's what the word is for, just like a seed. A seed is to grow something. Yeah. You know, I've got a 
whole drawer full of seeds over there. Yeah. You know, I do a lot of gardening, and as long as they're sitting in that drawer, they don't do a thing. No. But when I put them in that soil, uh -huh. pretty soon I start seeing things coming up, coming yep. up out of the ground. Yep. And that's the way the Word of God is. Yeah. You can have 35 Bibles laying around your house and until it gets into your heart, don't do a thing. It doesn't yeah. produce a thing. You know, they're just dust collectors. But once you open them yeah. and start putting that into your heart, in your heart, what happens? It grows. It grows. It grows. Things it begin to happen producing. in your life. You begin to change. Yeah. And first of all, you know, it says the blade. Well, that's just, you know, in our beginning life. We're just, things are starting to change. But then we start to mature. And pretty soon, you know, we're fully mature. Yeah. And, of course, the harvest, he could be talking of course, about the final last days, you know, when Could there will be, be a harvest, but also a harvest in our own lives as we begin to see the change. So we begin to look back on our lives and see how much we've changed, how much we've matured. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and of course, as long as we're still in this flesh, we'll continue growing. Uh -huh. You know, it's, it's, there's not an end point in, as far as in this life. Uh, we just continue growing. So we start yeah. producing the fruit that's listed right. in Galatians. And he says in, in John, joy, I believe it's chapter peace. 15, he talks about, or 14, anyway, he says that, you know, he prunes some of the fruit so we can produce more. Yeah. So we're supposed to keep on producing, just like a good fruit tree. You know, you fruit some fruit trees produce for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know, different different uh, types last different length of time, but every year if you keep pruning them back, they'll keep producing keep fruit. Producing. And that's what we should be doing, producing fruit Fruits. all through our lives. Fruits of righteousness. <laughs> I don't think we get to that point where we say, oh, you know, that's the end, you know, I'm not going to produce any more fruit. Uh, the only time that comes is when we leave this body mm -hmm. but as long as we're in his body i believe god wants to be producing fruit in us and again that can be talking about fruit within ourselves the fruit of the spirit the love the yeah. joy the peace the yeah. long suffering and all uh -huh. those things but also the fruit of seeing other souls brought to the lord yeah. of other other lives being yeah. changed because of our example because uh -huh. of our teaching because yeah. of our words because what is planted <clears throat> in your heart is going to come out that's right. He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the speaks. mouth speaks. So what's coming out your mouth? <laughs> that's, that's a good measure. What kind yeah. of seeds in there? Yeah. You know, if there's some stuff, not, not so good stuff coming out, then maybe, <laughs> maybe you need to plant some different seed. Yeah. You know, I plant good seed out in my garden, but all every year there's always some other stuff that comes up yeah. too that I got to keep pulling out called weeds. The weeds. <laughs> and there's weeds that try to grow up in our lives too, as we yeah. talked about in the parable of the sower. You That's know, right. the, the the deceitfulness of riches, the concern about other things. Mm -hmm. uh, those are weeds that constantly want to come up in our life yeah. to get us distracted. So we got to keep pulling those weeds out so we can get the good fruit, the good crop. All right, let's go on. Let's try and finish this chapter today. Je Jesus said, verse 30, how can I describe the kingdom of God? Yeah. What's, what's a good way of describing it? What story should I use to illustrate it? I know what. It's like a mustard seed planted in yeah. the ground. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. Mm -hmm. It grows long branches, and birds can make nests in its shade. Now, I've never seen a mustard seed, but they tell me it's about the size of a grain of sand. The Jews called it the, the smallest of all seeds, and it is a tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. and, but yet, <clears throat> the full-grown mustard plant, they say, can get to about 12 feet tall, which is about... Wow four feet higher than this ceiling here. <laughs> and that's huge. Just from a little grain of sand. You know, it's seeds just amaze me. I think, how in the world <laughs> is all the information, that little bitty seed, it, maybe you can barely see it. it. It's so tiny. Even the biggest seeds, you know, are not all that big. And, and yet, within that seed is all the information 
that's needed to produce a plant. I looked up one time the, the seed of uh, uh, these redwoods and sequoia trees, you know, they grow hundreds of feet yeah. high, 300 some feet high and get, you know, 30, Massive 25 trees. feet in diameter. And their seed is, is not very big. It's, you know, you, you could easily put a whole, you know, quite a bunch of them in your hand. They're just small seeds. And yet within that seed is all the information that's needed to produce a huge tree. And then it's the same. He's describing this or comparing it with the kingdom of God. Within yeah. the word of God, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. I mean, we got one book. You know, there's millions of books in the world, but this one book, this one. within itself, it has the power to build a huge kingdom, to build a huge kingdom within us uh -huh. and within this whole world. Yeah, it, It's powerful. And it's, again, it as we said earlier, you don't nearly, really have to understand it totally. You don't have to be a, a Bible scholar, Bible answer man to, to have it work in your heart. All you got to do is put it in there and hold on to it and it'll begin to grow. It'll begin to produce something. And out of that little tiny beginning, you'll see a tremendous change. I have seen so many, you know, working in the jail and prison ministry, you know, having seen these guys and mm -hmm. ladies too, ladies, that, ladies that too. Their, their life is a mess. You know, some of them, they've spent most of their life in, in prison. They've been on drugs or alcohol or whatever. And yet, the Word of God gets into their heart. And we see a, a tremendous change. Wow. You know, I mean, we have people that we've, we've ministered to in the jail that are pastoring now. And bringing other people to yeah, the Lord. that's right. And, and it's, it's amazing what that seemingly small little word that little seed that we plant in people's lives mm -hmm. and God takes it and begins to produce a, yes. a tremendous harvest yes. it's it's amazing yes it you is. know and again we don't not necessarily have to understand it all all we got to do is plant the seed you know again you don't have to teach a, a kindergarten uh, kid how to all the the scientific stuff of how a seed grows you just tell them plant it and water it plant yeah. it and water it and it'll grow. <laughs> Watch it grow you plant the seed in your heart and you water it by holding on to it it'll grow it'll produce a tremendous yeah. <clears throat> harvest in your life verse 33 says jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people yes. as much as they could understand you know we just have a small part of what jesus taught i love to hear some of the other stories and illustrations oh. that he told and you know and john and his gospel he said that if, Je if everything that jesus said and did was written down the world would not be able to contain the books oh, no. it'd be so great to hear but what we got what we need yes you know i'm not trying to say that god shortchanged us he he gave us what we need yeah. and and you know we've got enough we've got enough to understand Whoa. And said, in fact, his public ministry, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. But afterwards, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. Yeah. He took time and, and went on and explained to them. And then we kind of jump ahead. You know, we've been going through all these parables. Uh -huh. And uh, we got a, got a change here now. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, this is verse 35, Let's cross the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon, a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Wow. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care we're going to drown? <laughs> Wake up so you can watch us drown. <laughs> When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Silence, be still. Same thing he said to the demonic spirits. Shut up, and come out. Yeah. Here he's saying, Silence, shut up, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then they asked him, then he asked them, yeah. Why are you afraid? You still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They ask each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. 
<clears throat> we've talked in in the previous chapters about it, first of all his authority and teaching they said uh -huh. they were amazed at his teaching because yeah. he taught as one with authority uh -huh. then we talked about his authority over demonic spirits uh -huh. then we talked about his authority over sickness and and uh, when he healed the yeah. people yeah. and now we see he's even got authority over the weather, over the, weather. Over the wind and the waves. Uh -huh. Jesus made the statement, we're going to the other side. They got over there. Jesus, he was perfectly calm. Yeah. You know, we're going to the other side. I'm going to lay down and take a nap. Been a busy day. I'm just going <laughs> to take a nap. Well, this storm comes up. He's sleeping right through the storm. Yeah. How many of you can sleep through a storm? <laughs> you know, especially when you're in a boat that's... Up and, up and down and up and oh, down. No. I'd be hanging my side, my head over the side of the <laughs> boat. But, but Jesus was still sleeping. He wasn't moved by the storm. And these guys, at least four of them that we know of, are fishermen. They were used to that lake. And, and they, I'm sure, had seen many storms. But this one, for some reason, it had them scared. Yeah. And the boat was beginning to fill with water. Mm -hmm. And I know it's interesting what they, they said. They didn't go back and say, Jesus, can you do something? Help us here. Yeah. You know, grab a bucket and start pay, pay, bailing or something. Yeah. But what was their mark? Don't you even care that we're going to drown? Yeah. You know, wake up and worry with us. Wake up and be afraid with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was a lot of why he was saying, do you still have no faith? Not that they were afraid of the storm. I mean, that's natural to be afraid, you know, to have some fear when you're yeah, in a situation like in. that. But they didn't come to him for help. All they said is, don't you care? Don't you care? Of course, of course he, cares. he cares. Yeah, of course he cares. God cares about everything in yes, your life. He does. But it's almost like they didn't think he really cared. You just, you know, you brought us out here to kill us. Kind of like uh, the, I thought of, just thought of the Israelites out in the wilderness, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Every time they came up uh, against a problem, you know, God, of course, God miraculously brought them out of Egypt, he miraculously did. led them through the, 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 the sea, and then, you know, and then they run out of water, and it's like, you just brought us out here to kill us. <clears throat> and, and, forgot about all the miracles that God uh -huh. had done. Uh -huh. And then same thing here. They forgot about all the demons he cast out, all the sick people he had healed, yeah. all the tremendous things he'd done. He and it's like, wonders, wonders, don't wonders. you care that we're drowning? It's like, <laughs> they, they, I don't know what they expected. They weren't asking for help. They weren't praying or weren't calling out to him to, to do something. But what happened when he woke up? He just spoke to the storm, yeah. spoke to the waves. He's like, it's nothing. Be still, be quiet, <laughs> and immediately it all calms down. Yeah. Now, they were scared before, but what does it say here? It says, they were terrified. What were they terrified about? They were terrified because he had authority over the storm. Yes, it's yes. It's like, whoa. Whoa. I mean, <laughs> like I say, they seen all these miracles that had yeah. happened, but... Uh, to have control over the weather? And that's and they their response that's... was, who is this man? It's like all of a sudden it was a new revelation to uh -huh. him. You know, I mean, one thing to heal people and cast out some demons and teach with authority, but to be able to calm a storm? Yeah. I mean, that's unheard of. And they ask each other, you know, who is this guy? Who is this man? It, it was it was to them it was frightening that they they didn't they didn't totally understand it. And as we go along, we'll see that it took them a long time before they come to the point of understanding yeah. who this person is. But I'm so glad we understand now who he was. Wow. Is. Yeah, Not, we can see it all. Yeah, he <laughs> is. Couldn't. Not only the Son of God, but He was God manifest in the flesh. He That's came for right. the whole purpose of showing us the way to live and showing us the way to God. That's right. And it's not hard. You know, that was, as we've talked about before, the problem with the Pharisees, they wanted to make it hard to get to God. 
They made all kinds of rules and regulations. Yeah. They got upset at Jesus for letting his disciples pick grain and eat on the, the Sabbath day. Yeah. They got mad at Jesus for healing on the Sabbath day. They got mad at Jesus for all <laughs> kinds of things. They wanted to make it hard. You know, you got to do this. You got to follow this rule, these rules and regulations before you can get to God. And Jesus said later on, he says, if you just believe in me, put your trust in me. Yeah. Yeah. To know who I am, to follow after me, that that's true eternal life. Yeah. And that's Jesus it. still calms the seas he today. Does. He's calms and the he still storms calms in our, our hearts, hearts. Yeah. and in our lives. He's that's a true. powerful God. Nothing is too hard for God. Amen. Nothing is too hard for Him. Nothing's impossible with God. Absolutely nothing. And so... Well, I just encourage you, you know, I'm sure yes. most of you watching this have already made that commitment to, to uh, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But yeah. if you haven't, today is as good a day as any. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Yes. If you just allow the Word of God to come into your heart, ask Jesus to come into your heart and, and teach you, yes. He will. Spend time in the Word and He'll begin to teach you. If you've already made that uh, commitment, but... Maybe you've kind of drifted away, you know, let, as a, as a parable said earlier, let the uh, concerns of this world, the worries about yeah. everyday things, the deceitfulness of riches kind of draw you away and yeah. choke out the fruit. Start pulling those things out and let the Word of God start producing right. fruit in your life. Start making a change. Yeah. You know, there's nothing, nothing like the fruit of the Spirit that grows in us the peace and the love and yes. the joy to have those things in our life they're, they're priceless they're priceless yes. and nothing yeah. that comes into our lives is too hard for God to, to uh, heal, deliver to save, to strengthen, to build up that's true you know it's years ago, I, I don't know why this thought just came to me, I hadn't thought of this in a long time but I had a, we had a preacher one time that when certain situations got too difficult, he always made the, the statement, you know, you can't unscramble scrambled eggs. <laughs> but you know what? I believe God can God unscramble can scrambled <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so if maybe your life's in such a mess, you feel like there's no hope for me. Oh. Well, I know that there is hope. Yes, there God is. God is a God of hope. And he, he can solve your problems. He can straighten your life out. Yes, he can he change can. your life. I've seen it happen so many times, Absolutely. not only in our lives, yeah. but many others. And like I say, can we, do it. we've been in a jail and prison ministry for years. And we've, I've seen, and we've both seen God yeah. straighten out so many lives. Yeah. It looked like a total mess, like there's no hope. Uh -huh. And yet God straightens them out. And he'll do that in families, too. If you have yes. a family that that looks like there's just nothing that can be done, people are not going to change, oh, yeah, they will. You yeah. keep praying. You keep praying. God's working inside. Amen. Well, let's just pray right now. Well, Father, I thank, thank you Jesus. for your word, Lord. Yes. I thank you that your word is powerful. Thank your you, word Father. is alive. It's living. It's just like a seed, Lord. Yes. It has life within it. And all we have to do is plant it in our heart. Yes, and it will Lord. produce a harvest, Father. So I pray, Lord, for those, you, maybe they're struggling today. Maybe having a hard time. Their family's a mess. Their life yes. is a mess. Seems like everything around them is a mess, Father. Lord, I thank you that you're the... You're the unmesser, Lord. You can take things that are messed up yes. and make things beautiful out of them, Father. God so I just pray us. encouragement and hope Thank to those you, that are struggling today, Father. Lord, just help them uh, come to that place of realizing they just need to plant that yes. seed in their heart, Lord, and things will change, Father. Thank Lord, you, just God. bless your people, yes, Lord, Lord, and we God thank you, Father, us. for the power in the Word of God, Father. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. We will see you again next week, yeah. and we'll jump into Mark chapter 5.